This video is for Chapter 6 Corrections. The first page is from 6.4, which are problems 1 through 9, where we're trying to find inverse. So when you're trying to find the inverse, the first thing I do is rewrite the equation because we know f of x is the same thing as y. Then we're going to switch the x and the y. And now I want to get y back by itself. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. So I have x minus 1 divided by negative 3 equals y. And that is my inverse. Number 2, f of x is the same thing as y. y equals 2x squared plus 4. Now I'm going to switch my x and my y. And I need to get y back by itself. So first I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I have x minus 4 equals 2y squared. Then I divide both sides by 2. So I have x minus 4 divided by 2 equals y squared. Now I have to get rid of this square. So I'm going to square root and square root. And so I get the square root of x minus 4 divided by 2 equals y. I cannot divide this 4 by this 2 because of the x. Number 3, y equals the square root of x minus 1. I switch the x with the y. Now the first thing I have to do is get rid of the square root. So I'm going to square both sides, which gives me x squared equals y minus 1 because the square cancels the whole square root symbol. Now I add 1 to both sides and I have x squared plus 1 equals y for an inverse. Number 4, I have a bunch of coordinate points. These are all x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. So if you want to find the inverse, which we're going to label like this, you don't have to, but it's just useful to know. This symbol right here means inverse. So just switch up negative 1, 9. 7, negative 6, 2, 5, 1, negative 8, and negative 5, negative 6. And the reason you switch them is because to find an x, to find an inverse, you just take the x and the y and you switch them. All right, for number 5, we're going to do f of g of x, and we're going to do g of f of x. So starting with f of g of x, I'm going to take the, two, the f function, which is 2 times x minus 6, but where the x was, I put a great big open parenthesis. And in its place, I'm going to put the g function, which is 1 half, x plus 3. Now I'm going to simplify this problem. So to distribute the 2, 2 times 1 half x is x, 2 times plus 3 is plus 6, and then minus 6 is still out there. x plus 6 minus 6, those two cancel, and I'm left with an x, which is the first step. That's our first goal. Now I'm going to go with g and plug f of x inside of it. So we're just going the opposite direction. This time when I write the g function, I have 1 half x plus 3, but where the x is, I'm going to leave a big open parenthesis, and I'm going to fill it in with... 2x minus 6. Now I distribute. 1 half of 2x is just x. 1 half of 6 is just 3. The 3's are going to cancel and I get x. If my f of g of x gives me an x and my g of f of x gives me an x, then I have inverse functions. Number 6. We're going to do the same process. We're going to start with f of g of x. So I'm going to take the f function, x squared minus 5, where the x was. I'm going to leave a great big parenthesis. Notice that the squared is still there. I'm going to put inside that parenthesis the square root of x plus 5, and I'm going to simplify. So the first thing that has to happen is that the square has to cancel the square root. So now x plus 5 is free, 
and I have x plus 5 minus 5, and the 5's can cancel and I get x. Now if I start with g and I plug in the f of x function, the g function is the square root of x plus 5, where the, where the x was, I'm now going to put in x squared minus 5. Now here the first thing that has to happen is that the 5's have to cancel so that I have x squared by itself and that way the square root of x squared is going to be x and there we have x and x so we have inverses. <laughs> Number 7, you're graphing this equation. This is a quadratic equation because it has x squared which makes it a parabola. So we're going to start off with the fact that this is going to shift us down one and the slope is going to be negative two so I'm going to go down two and right one and I'm going to mirror that dot in the other direction which is going to make a parabola that's upside down. Now the next step with this is to do the horizontal line test. We draw a horizontal line and see how many times our, our horizontal line crosses our graph. And in this case it's twice. If it touches one time, it's the inverse is a function, but touching twice means no. The inverse of this function is not a function. All right, number eight. Uh, what's the relationship between a quadratic and a square root? Quadratics are x squared and square roots are the square root of x, so when you put them together, the relationship is that they are inverses. They are inverse functions. Number nine, which function is the same as its inverse? The correct answer was b, and I'll show you why. If you have h of x equals seven minus x, I'm first of all going to rewrite this as y equals 7 minus x and now I need to find its inverse. So I switch the x with the y then now y needs to be back by itself so I'm going to subtract 7 x minus 7 equals negative y divide by negative 1 so that y will be by itself and I have x minus 7 divided by negative 1 equals y. Now if I divide by negative 1 this is negative x. And if I divide by negative 1, this is plus 7. And if you switch the order, you have 7 minus x equals y, which is the same thing that you started with. So which function is the same as its inverse? No, uh, letter B. For number 10, we're going to graph, we're going to talk about the transformations, and we're going to do domain and range. The equation is f of x equals negative square root of x minus 1. So we know the square root of x is going to have the kind of a, a half parabola shape. We know this is going to be shifted down 1, and the negative means it's reflected. So I'm going to start off shifting down 1 from the origin. My slope is negative 1, so I'm going to go down 1 over 1 and then I'm going to connect my curve, make half a parabola, and that's the graph. The domain, x is greater than or equal to 0 because that point is at x equals 0, and the range, y is less than or equal to negative 1 because this point is 0, negative 1. And this graph goes downward and to the right, so y is less than. For number 11, we have 2 times the square root of x plus 4. So for transformations, I have left 4 because anything in x world inside there is going to be opposite. And then this 2 tells me that I stretch, stretch my graph by 2. So if I shift left 4 from the origin, which is over here, that's my starting point, 
and stretch by two, so I'll go up two over one, and then I connect, and there's my half parabola. This point right here is at negative four, zero. So x is greater than or equal to negative four, and y is greater than or equal to zero. Number 12, we're going to graph the square root of x minus 2 plus 5. This x minus 2 is going to be right 2 because that's an x world. The plus 5 is going to be up 5. So from the origin, I'm going to go right 2 and up 5, which is ooh, going to leave me way up here. So I'm going to go into my words on this graph. The slope is just 1 because there's nothing there that means the slope is 1 and when I draw my graph I get my half parabola. This starting point here is at 2, 5 so x is greater than or equal to 2 y is greater than or equal to 5. Number 13, 14, 15, and 16 we're going to be writing the equation so we're always on these problems going to start with a square root function so if we're going to have a shrink, shrink is where slope is, so it goes before the square root. Left one unit, well left and right go inside with x, so it's going to be x plus 1 because left is with x in x world, so it's plus. Down four units is always going to be after the problem in the back over here. So down four units is going to be minus four. So the x always lies, but the, uh, the, the, the up and down unit does not. So x plus one is going to be the opposite of what you think, whereas down four units is going to be exactly what you think. So y equals one half x plus one minus four. On number 14, all we are doing is shifting down 5 units. Down is outside of the parentheses. It's outside of the square root. So square root of x minus 5 shows us a shift down 5 units. Number 15, we're going to reflect, which means it'll be negative. Stretch by 2 is going to be the slope. Shift it right 3 means it's going to be minus 3. And up 1 unit means we're going to have plus 1. So y equals negative 2 square root of x minus 3 plus 1 on the outside and there's our equation. Number 16 we're looking at the picture and we have to make our own conclusion so we can write the equation. So this has been shifted up 4 units because it's on the point um, 0, 4 and the slope C is negative 1. So if we write the equation, we're going to have negative 1 slope square root x plus 4. Or you could simply write it as negative square root of x plus 4. The last four problems are all solving problems. Anytime you solve, you're trying to isolate the square root part. So for this problem, I'm going to add 7 first which leaves me 3 times the square root of 16x equals 24. Then I'm still trying to get the square root by itself, so I divide both sides by 3, which leaves me the square root of 16x equals 8. Now I need to get rid of the square root, so I'm going to square both sides. 16x now equals 64, because remember the square and the square root cancel each other out. Divide both sides by 16, and x equals for number 18, to start working with this, um, our square root is already isolated, so we can go ahead and square both sides. Squaring cancels the square root and leaves me with 3x plus 1, and 7 squared is 49. Squaring and the square root cancel each other. That's the only thing that happens. 3x plus 1 is not touched in this process. So subtract 1 from both sides, 3x equals 48, and if you divide by 3, x is going to be 16. For number 19, we have the square root isolated. So we go ahead and square both sides. 
Now x minus 4 squared means x minus 4 times itself. The squaring and the square rooting cancel each other, so 2x minus 8 is now free from any square root. If you use FOIL, you get x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16 equals 2x minus 8. x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 2x minus 8. Now I need this side over here to be 0. So I'm going to first of all subtract 2x from both sides. So x squared minus 10x plus 16 equals negative 8. And now I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So now I have x squared minus 10x plus 24 equals 0. If I factor this, I get x minus 4 times x minus 6 equals 0. So x equals 4 is a solution, and x equals 6 is a solution. And if you have both of these solutions, that's fine. And the last problem, number 20, I'm trying to, the square root part is already isolated. So I'm going to square both sides. The square cancels the square root. The square cancels the square root. So 2x equals x plus 7. Now I just need to get the x's together, so subtract x on both sides, which leaves me with 1x equals 7. And that is the solution.